How's it going today, everyone? Carpo, another video, another beautiful day. Enough said. <laughs> today, in this installment of Carpo's Rants, I'm speechless trying to describe some things in life. <laughs> One of those is the feeling that I get from just looking at what's really going on with life. And I'm not talking about the life of a human or my life. I'm talking about life. The fact that this entire planet is covered with tenacious life that clings to existence. Not a fragile ecosystem like we may have once pictured it or a system that can't repair itself, but rather a cyclical self-healing system that you might call Gaia. Now, there's a lot of dispute, or rather just debate, about whether or not the Earth is actually a living organism. Yet, I've never chosen to involve myself in any of those debates because it seems so obvious. It's like arguing that the grass is green. It serves no purpose to argue that the Earth is alive or not alive when you can just see that it's alive, and you can observe. <coughs> the neurons in our brain <coughs> And like uh, I mentioned the other day in a video about bacteria and how they uh, help our bodies and brains produce these compounds and chemicals, to a bacteria, to a bacterial cell, to say it was conscious, it may think that, that their system is all that matters, whatever organ or whatever area that they are in, uh, that somehow that system evolved and that... The, that, that there's no way that there could be a larger system that was still aware, which would be the human body. Um, the human mind, rather. And that collection of humans consider us neurons, and that the humans are the neural network of the, of the Earth. Now, this is just, of course, a, you know, trying to set an example, give an example. I'm not saying humans are the neural connections of the Earth, but maybe one aspect of the organism. Uh, I've heard several theories that mushrooms are, or mycelium, are the networks of the Earth's awareness. And mushrooms may very well be the oldest organisms on the planet. And there are some that speculate the mushrooms were here long before any life on land. Now, fungus will grow on just about anything, so it's not a very big surprise. However, picturing 10 foot tall mushrooms, you know, a billion years ago, it's kind of an amazing thought. But all the while, we've evolved with these fungi, and they've developed their own network, and the mycelial mats underneath the Earth. The largest organism on the planet is a few hundred miles south of here, in Oregon. It's a, it's a network of mycelium underground. It's one mushroom patch that's thousands of acres, I believe. I can't remember the exact size of it. And there's also a large organism in Montana, which is considered the largest group of trees. I can't remember if it's the spruce, no, not spruce, alder, it yeah, doesn't matter. Particular trees that grow uh, in groups, and where rather than sprouting a seed, they're all growing off the roots of the existing system. And when I see trees and fungi like this, I picture them very similarly to humans. The difference is that humans aren't tied to one place and the neural network that connects us can't be seen. In other words, picture humans as mushrooms. If you see a whole group of mushrooms, they may very, very well be connected to another group of mushrooms 100 feet away. And you don't see that because it's underground. And these pictures, they appear, appear to be completely separate mushrooms, yet they're completely in constant communication. Now take that a step further. It wasn't until, you know, we really started looking at mushrooms that we realized that not only do they only grow in certain areas, but they have a symbiosis with trees. And some mushrooms won't grow unless a particular tree is in a particular situation, in a particular weather, and a particular year. And all these are just examples of how life is just utterly complex. It's deep. It's too deep for any one person to ever comprehend or understand. You could spend your entire life studying sea creatures and not know a thing about land-dwelling animals. You could spend your entire life studying animals and still never understand biology at all. And you can spend your whole life studying biology and never understand animals. <clears throat> yeah. 
and uh, you know we have all these specialties that humans have and bringing together and seeing the consensus is how the best way to draw a conclusion in other words rather than listening to one person on a YouTube video or on a website saying hey there is no there, there's nothing outside of the human mind we're just uh, thinking creatures that were evolved to be where we're at and when you die you die and there's no other connection there's no connection to other people there's no ESP there's no afterlife no pre-life there's nothing there's no soul and a lot of people believe that it can never be proven or disproven likewise many people will tell you that you definitely have a soul and it definitely does this and it does that and that we are all definitely connected and these people always fall short too of being able to prove their claims remaining neutral and in the middle just knowing that we are connected is much more important than trying to prove it and that's my opinion of course um, <clears throat> I feel like when people are trying too hard to prove things it's because they're not confident enough in what they actually believe or because they feel so animated about it that they feel like everybody should think that way and I see a different a, a different world where each person has their own contribution in other words you know I don't talk about people being asleep or um, try to talk about large groups of people being dumb or ignorant because they believe something because they are part of that consensus reality just like when I talked about politics you can't dismiss the whole other side just because they don't hold the same political views so trying not to get too far off topic here because I'm, I'm trying to compare the idea that if you lean too far towards one extreme and it causes you problems in life because you're always arguing or trying to prove yourself th then you need to bring yourself back to the middle trying to prove that God exists won't happen trying to prove God doesn't exist will not happen yet thousands of years we're still arguing Meanwhile, many of us have moved beyond that, and instead of going out and asking people questions, or asking God questions, or praying for answers, we meditate and look at nature, and observe what happens. And you notice that the more attention that you pay, the more you will see. And all the philosophers a thousand years ago were able to see the same reality that I'm talking about. They can see the animals, they can see how they behave. However, we didn't have, you know, long-term cameras that we could set up and really observe the behaviors to see how wild these animals really are. I mean, how not wild in the sense of being wild, but wild in the sense of the amazing things that they do. The mating rituals, the way that plants have a symbiotic relationship with animals and other plants, how certain plants can actually call predators to attack things. When the when a tobacco plant gets attacked uh, by a certain insect, <coughs> I believe it's a beetle, <coughs> it will call, it will release chemical messengers into the air which will call the predator for that insect. And um, also nicotine itself, being a component of the plant, is an alkaloid that keeps animals and insects from wanting to eat the plant. Um, but the plants have developed all these compounds and amazing things that we weren't aware of. Now, people knew that herbs had certain reactions and certain effects on you, but in recent years we've been able to see so far down below what our eyeballs can see. And we see that the microscopic world doesn't explain to us the macroscopic world. In other words, we thought that when we looked through a microscope and started to figure out how these DNA went together and how cells you know, worked, that we would be able to say, okay, this is a completely mechanical, normal thing that happened through evolution, and very well it may have. My, my argument here isn't against evolution, I'm not even having an argument, but it's rather to say that uh, <clears throat> evolution probably occurred in uh, just the way that it's been described. However, within that, the question is, is evolution working towards something greater? And I've had this discussion with a lot of folks who say, you know, there's no reason to believe that humans are anything special or that we even have any end or end game or that we have any meaning in the universe. And contemplating this for many years, I've come to the conclusion that that's right. We don't have any meaning in this universe except the meaning that we give ourselves and the meaning that we give our lives. So you choose to live a certain way. Damn, bro. Hardcore. <laughs> you choose to live a certain way and, and and observe the things around you and you just get a feeling that there's something greater, that there's a, a, 
and, and, and then for me personally, I have to kind of knock down my, my thoughts and ideas to say, hey, wait a minute, you know, don't, don't, don't trap yourself in, into thinking something because it feels good or feels comfortable because that's one of the things that I know that humans do. But my basis for believing that humans, as well as all animals, everything, plants, are all connected through this, the ether, if you will, um, I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that we do affect our environment with our thoughts, and that thoughts do hold weight. Maybe not mass that we can measure, but that they affect the world around us. Um, without going too deep into it, I'm not going to bring up the double slit experiment and try to say, look, we don't know how this works. There's been a lot of science to show that many of these things are, uh, there's fundamental basics to how they work, but there have been some things that have been ignored by science and those are the deeper connections, the things that can't be re repeated. Um, and this is why people start to hate science. You know, I've talked to a lot of folks who, you know, have a real issue with scientists, as if uh, the scientists are trying to lie to us, to convince, convince us that there's nothing greater, no connection. The truth is, I, th I see scientists um, uh, just like I would see any other group of people, rather than saying the scientists are getting together to try to fool everyone else. I would say that a scientist would be more likely to want to fool each other, or rather, they're doing this to make discoveries, and they would love to be recognized. So, if a, if a particular scientist were to discover some amazing connection in nature, uh, they wouldn't be as likely to suppress that. They'd be likely to keep their mouth shut because they can't repeat the process, can't repeat the experiment. So my point for saying this is that many of these uh, scientific discoveries are repeatable experiments, and those are the fundamental basics for how life goes together in our three-dimensional reality. And then there are other building blocks which are in the ether. And you may think of these as potentials, okay? The potential of how a thing may be. The, the potential of an outcome. And the more we start to observe this and see that we can affect the outcome, and the more we have faith in the belief that we can do so, the more power we give ourselves. And so I'm definitely gonna you know, tread lightly and not say, hey, this is all fact. Uh, what I've observed is that by letting down my guard and stopping resisting and just observing, I'm able to see that there's such a wide connection between all natural things that there's no way that it that it could. It, let's put it this way: if I'm not trying to say that it proves that there's a god, definitely not. But what I am trying to prove is that it means that it's conscious, that life is conscious of itself, and that brings me back full circle to life being conscious and aware of itself, just like we're aware of our bodies. There's no reason to think that the greater sum of the whole hasn't become aware of its body. It seems like basic knowledge. It seems like something that we should all be born knowing, and I think that we all do. No matter how resistant you are to the belief that we're all connected, when you sit down and have a conversation with someone, you can feel their vibes long before you start the conversation you can sense being watched. There are so many different exper experiments that have been done where they have just left people thinking, what is going on here with these psychic things? What is it with telekinesis and remote viewing? And, and so I've set all that aside because there are things that I've realized that, that you can't prove. Just like trying to prove Bigfoot, UFOs, Illuminati, none of this does any good. You can bring all the evidence out, put it on the internet, and it's just internet, you know? Um, I've stopped believing that the world is suppressing knowledge and suppressing us from having our own power. And this is important to me because I, this is what I used to believe, that the governments or they or the Illuminati, whoever it is, has been keeping people dumb and suppressing people, and keeping them ignorant. And I thought to myself, how can 0.01% of the population keep down the rest of us? They can't. We've used it as a crutch to stop looking deeper and stop trying to understand ourselves. That we believe that the power that we have to see the truth has been taken away from us somehow or masked by a few people who have ill intent. Well, I'll tell you that my belief is that people with ill intent, they may be psychopathic and they may have a lot of power and a lot of money, but they know damn well they have no influence over my mind, nor your mind, if you choose not to be influenced. It takes a while, but eventually you can watch a TV commercial and realize you're being marketed to. To me, that's something that I realize, uh, that I assume everyone knows. But after speaking with more and more people, I realize they don't know that. 
And I'd really like to say that in order to have these realizations, you can't just sit and observe. You to be for me personally, I can't just sit and observe and say there are connections. I have to do the research and the homework too. I have to actually be educated and worldly. I have to be intelligent. And intelligence is something that people almost shame people for now. Oh, you're one of those smart guys. You're one of those book read guys. Oh, you read you read information. <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right I do. And uh, everybody else should too, since it's available. But you know, I like to think that everybody kind of has their head on their shoulders, and unfortunately there are a lot of stupid people out there. You know, I watched a video earlier, I probably shouldn't have even watched it, it was just in my suggested list, and I believe it was Mark Dice, who, disclaimer, I really dislike Mark Dice, he's a, he's a Christian um, who, you know, talks about how all these other groups are Satanists, and, and you know, I've had arguments with him personally in the past a long time ago, and I just walked away from it, you know. Uh, trying to sell his books, sell his information. But a couple of the videos he did were, you know, kind of revealing, and one of them was uh, asking people, like on a California beach, it was the 4th of July, and they were asking people, you know, he, he was kind of setting them up, hey, isn't it great that we're celebrating the freedom from slavery? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And not one, you know, so many of the people he asked didn't even know what the 4th of July was. Here are the people saying, we're celebrating our freedom, and they don't even fucking know what it's freedom from. And they say, oh, freedom from Europe? And like, which country in Europe? Oh, I don't know. I mean, of course, we know that there's just a selected group that are interviewed. And we see this on a video, and we assume that everyone's like that. And we know people aren't like that. But enough people are like that to be a little bit frustrating. I guess maybe it's not the best example to use uh, something that's, you know, specific to a political nature of a country. But uh, all we all know, you've all seen videos where people have been asked really stupid basic questions that they can't answer. I've talked to people who don't understand uh, some things that to me are fundamental basic knowledge, but I realize after talking with them that they're not basic knowledge. Things like, somebody said, how can you prove that the Earth is really a sphere, or rather, um, how do we know that the moon's not flat, or this or that. Somebody didn't understand how an eclipse works, so I explained it to her and she was able to get it. But I found that a lot of people who want to believe that things are, uh, you know, whether it be conspiracy or otherwise, uh, they, they feed off that, they don't want to hear the truth. And this isn't just conspiracy stuff, this is religion, conspiracy, politics, everything you run into in life. People don't want to hear the truth. And they talk all day long about how they want to know the truth, and they want to know the meaning of life, and they want to understand themselves. And then when they're presented with any facts or, or ideas that con contradict their own, they walk right away from it. I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to see this. And the internet has definitely hastened the experience. It's, it's definitely, a person can spend a lot of time talking with people on the internet and get a pretty damn good view of how certain types of people react to something. For example, if you go to a conspiracy video and you ask a question or propose maybe this isn't true, just to try it, play a game, you'll get people saying, oh, you're a dumb fuck, oh, you're just ignorant, you're stupid, you're sheep people are angry, and so they don't take it out on the people they're angry at, they take it out on other people who aren't aware of what they think they're aware of. And uh, this goes back to knowing, to knowing that you're right, and knowing that what you uh, believe is not just right for the sake of being right, but because it is the right thing to do. Many people believe they're right, but they believe what they believe isn't right. <laughs> they believe that the world is corrupt, and they believe that that's the right thing. But how can you believe the entire world is corrupt when the world is a reflection of the universe, unless the universe is corrupt? And corruption is based on comparing to progress. Corruption, you know, establishment. Everything that I see in life I compare to the extremes, and that's really helped me to perceive things differently. But when I look around at the world and I see these amazing things, like the way that a bird lands on a branch and kind of pecks for a minute and you think about that little spot he's picking, pecking some little spot off the tree where a bug was and if you zoom in on that spot then you'll see a crushed leg from the bug and some cellulose fibers from the inside of the plant you go in further and you see the chlorophyll production which is still one of the most amazing things in nature believe it or not people talk about photosynthesis we still don't get it you know I was 
I'm as curious as anyone about science, and, and I look these things up to say, what do scientists say about these things? And I find that they're really ashamed to say they don't know. So the things that we don't know as a species, uh, we don't go out and say, we don't know this, we're going to figure it out. We say, look, we can't figure this out, so we're going to set it aside because we don't want to be embarrassed about not knowing something as simple as photosynthesis. Now, I'm sure somebody will argue and say, no, this is how it works. And it's true. They do know how it works. But the plant is taking sunlight, converting it into energy to split water molecules. Um, our bodies are just as amazing, even more amazing, of course. Well, maybe not more amazing. Uh, but, but what I'm saying here, I guess, is that uh, if we could duplicate it, if we could create a process of photosynthesis, make an organic version of that to where we could harness sunlight to produce energy like that, uh, we would have done it a long time ago. And we try with solar panels, but uh, it's not quite the same. So my point being that nature is more complex and some of the simplest things that we think we know, we really don't know. And uh, I don't know, it never ceases to amaze me that, that people just think they have life figured out. And uh, for a while, I kind of bought into it, you know, like everyone else. At first I thought I was the shit when I was young, you know, I knew everything. And then I started looking at the truth, listening to people talk. And I would recommend, hey, have you heard this guy? Have you heard this guy? I'd listen to Manly Hall or Alan Watts or all the conspiracy guys before that. And then I got into philosophy. Uh, but, you know, after listening to enough of them, I realized there's always a little truth laced with a few lies and, and some in inconsistencies and some misunderstandings. But what I really look at is the arrogance of the person who's presenting the information. That's all I can say about it. If a person's presenting something as truth, see how they react to people who com are combative or who question what they're saying. If they start calling them names and telling them they're just ignorant and dumb, um, and the person's asking legitimate questions, then, you know, uh, it, it's easy to realize that a lot of people are trying to bullshit you out there. There are a lot of people who want to tell you exactly how to fix yourself and how you can be spiritually healed and cleansed, and then at the end they want to sell you their book, you know, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with making a living off of what you do if you're a spiritual teacher or advisor. You have to live. But if, if the whole reason why you talk about the things and you, you're fake and you act floaty and wear robes and pretend like you know what you're talking about, um, you know, there are a lot of sociopaths out there who turn into cult leaders and things like that. And uh, I see a lot of YouTube channels over the years who have kind of become like that. They started out as really easygoing, cool people. And after they got enough people supporting their work, they started be assuming that they were always right. And if they drew a conclusion somebody didn't agree with, them and all their cronies would attack the person and block them and, you know, erase their comments. And, and I'm using YouTube as an example of what happens in the real world. Uh, you know, we see somebody in, in the workplace or a scientist, a fellow scientist or a fellow worker who, who, um, who is questioning the establishment and the way that things are. And they get fired. You know, we just let them go. Or just keep our mouth shut and fire them for something else the next week. You know, we don't want to make any waves in the workplace, right? And that's kind of how the world is. You know, there's people who want to make waves constantly. And then there are people who just want to live their lives and they don't speak up enough. And once again, it comes back to balance. So go outside and look for a bird and do some thinking. Namaste.